Knocks, Nigeria's Attorney General, Malami over move to extradite businessman to U.S. against court order. Lassisi filed a notice of appeal against the said decision on the same day the, do- the judgment was delivered. Kayode Ajulo, a, a human rights lawyer, has condemned the extradition process of a Lagos businessman, Adishina Surajuddin Lassisi, to United States, notwithstanding his pending approval or his pending appeal at the Court of Appeal, Abuja by the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami. Lassisi is wanted in the U.S. in relation to his alleged involvement with criminal activities in respect of which 17 counts have been filed against him in a court in Texas. He's charged with sundry offences, including conspiracy to commit wire and mail fraud and actual commission of mail and wire fraud and money laundering, among others. Lassisi's alleged co-defendants are said to be U.S. to be standing trial currently in the U.S., a federal high court in Abuja on May 26 granted the application by the Attorney General of the Federation for his extradition. However, Lassisi filed a notice of appeal against the said decision on the same day the judgment was delivered. A statement on Wednesday, Adjulo, who is the counsel for the businessman, said it was unprofessional, unethical and unlawful that Malami, despite being the chief law officer of the country, took steps towards the execution of the said judgment of the trial in court, which is already subject of an appeal. Okay, so on first reactions, obviously, there has not been a judgment to this case. And if the businessman has actually appealed, then why, I guess, Obviously, as the lead counsel to the businessman, he is stating that Malami should not take steps towards the execution or judgment of the case when it's under appeal um, by allowing or, I guess, giving the permission for this man to be taken to the U.S. to go face the courts. And, okay, in my personal opinion, maybe I don't understand the full story, but what I genuinely think is, well, if he's charged in the U.S., he's got to go. (laughs) I don't understand. Of course, at the end of the day, we're not trying to say that he's guilty or anything, but I think what everyone would think to in this case is the case of Abakari, because in this case, the promptness of the the general, of, um, of the attorney general, is giving okay, so you know what is the right thing to do, but in this case of Abakari, you know, the government was very, very slow, very slow, and you can see intentional towards making the process difficult. And it's fun because you know, Malami is out here giving court orders or giving you know judgments, however, his him being, I guess, the chief officer of the, of the nation. The courts in the nation are used, and even the government itself, they're used to flouting court orders like it's nothing. So, on the basis of that, I guess that's where you may say, you know what, this is unfair because of your reaction and your your judgment. Yeah, which your reaction, your, your, your proactivity on this case. And you are very much slow, so obviously that shows favoritism. And this is a businessman who you know, again, might not have, not, we'll just not have the connections that Abakari has to be able to, you know, get what he wants. But again, on the grounds of the fact that, you know, yes, you may compare to Abakari's case and look at Malami very, you know, sideways for his decision. But the fact remains that if he needs to be, you know, taken to the U.S. And, I mean, if he needs to be extradited to the U.S. to face trial and do all that, then the process has to go on. Going on to the comment section, the first thing uh, it states, funny thing is that some Yorubas don't even know they're being marginalized by Fulani terrorists. 
government like the Igbos. The difference is that Igbos resist them and fight back, but the Yorubas pretend it doesn't happen. They call it diplomacy. I freed a thousand slaves and I would have freed a thousand more only if they knew they were slaves. Okay. Well, the Nepotic and sectarian decisions and actions of Buhari and Malami are all felonization agenda flavored. The Nigerian Bar Association should dewig this legal misfit for being easily prone to influences. Where's the Bakari? What is he still doing in Nigeria? Correctional facility. Tribalism should be constitutionalized since it has received institutionalized blessings. Okay. Do you also agree with that? Of course, the, you know, as this person has says, nepotism is written all over the the joining and the working together of Malami and Buhari because, you know, Bu- Abakari's case, which is, of course, and even, well, obviously, it's big. It's a, for Nigeria, it is a bigger case. But in America, they can decide for themselves. But for Nigeria, I mean, this man, you know, is not just an average citizen that's just a businessman who has committed a crime so this is someone who is part of the government who is meant to ensure that crime isn't committed and in fact with his influence did not even make sure justice um was served because some of those way well that he would have contact with he freed them he gave them the opportunity i mean of course the the popular um popular fraudster his name is not coming to memory, but of course, a popular fraudster who, you know, I mean, if you're associated with that kind of individual and you are a man in office, not just any man in office, but a man in office that's meant to prevent scandals like that and, you know, cr- um, crime like that, then it says a lot about the system that it's <laughs> that it's in. And obviously, how accountability does not just exist in the Nigerian space. So... Yes, this is the reason we should all vote APC and PDP out. Let's forget about party and brother issues. It's the problem. The problem is with thing is we shouldn't just vote to get a party out and hope that it will pain them. Because at the end of the day, I think it was the same energy that Nigeria did have in terms of putting PDP um, out of office and putting APC in. We actually need to know, okay, fine, we want to remove these individuals, but who do we replace them with? And I think it's a problem of us just not having the options that we want. And we are just having to then choose the lesser of two evils just because these are the options that we have. When really, you know, what if as Nigerians we decide, you know what, all these options are not good for us. So what what then happens? Put what you think about this in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe.